Time to own the Audi you've always wanted, because until February 28th, you can enjoy the Audi Q2 with a complimentary convenience pack, saving you over €2,600. So, all you have to do is choose the colour. Call into your local Audi dealer during the 191 sales event. Terms and conditions apply while stocks last. Blog Talk Radio. Always look up, never give up, and you will reach your goals. You're important, you're more than enough. And here she is, your host for Rolling with the Diva, Sabrina Williams. Thank you. Well, it is 55, I think, degrees here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am so, 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 so glad that you guys joined us for another episode of Rolling with the Diva. We're in season four. I'm acting like we're like a reality show or something, so I'm in season four. Actually, it's just a, when you make the shows, you can do that, so I decided to go in season four. It's been four years almost. But today, we have a very special guest, Jal Judah D. She's a comedian and a self-published author. Um, and we're going to welcome Jal Judah to the show because she is in a different time zone than us, and people don't want to stay up all night long talking to the diva, so we're going to get right to it. We're going to talk to Jal Judah for a few <laughs> minutes, and then we're going to get um, play a few songs and then come back. All right, Miss Jal Judah, how are you today? I'm doing great. If it wasn't cold, I'd be better. <laughs> Tell everybody where you're calling from. I'm calling from East Texas, and it is 39 degrees. Oh, Lord Jesus, that is cold, cold, cold. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm very sad that I have to say that it looks like the Rams might be going to the Super Bowl. I'm very sad that the Saints couldn't keep the lead and do what they needed to do. I just don't (laughs) like the Rams. They just seem to go from state to state. Originally, they were the Los Angeles Rams. Then they became the the St. Louis Rams, and now they're back, and they're the L.A. Rams. You know what? I'm just tired of them. They're like the Raiders. They just keep hopping and hopping more and more like people like on on pole dancing. Just go from one pole to the next. They just (laughs) crazy. But anyway. Everybody Rams at this point. Yep. So the Rams need to just, I'm not rooting for them. Didn't root for them today. I mean, I really have friends who play for the Rams. I know they'd probably be mad at me, but whatever. All right, y'all do that. <laughs> tell us, tell us about a little about you, and then we want to um, start asking questions about your comedy, comedy, and your new self-published book. Yes, ma'am. Um, my stage name is Jal Judah. I have been doing comedy over five years. Um, I started in Dallas, Texas. Um, now I'm back in East Texas due to uh, kidney failure. But hopefully I get on a transplant list soon so I can get up out of here to somewhere that I can maybe, you know, find a better comedy scene or just have better opportunities. Um, I do have uh, one book I have published. Uh, It's called See Me, Volume 1. And I'm also working on another book called Savage. And I'll probably complete Savage before I go into See Me, Volume 2 because I'm actually – like, you know, you hang around somebody just all the time and you get tired of seeing them. Yep. That's kind of uh, how I got with the characters that see me because it was like I was writing about them every day and, like, I had to deal with their drama every day and the twists and turns. I was like, dang, I'm tired of these people. Um, so I, like, actually took a break over the last year from writing and I'm just trying to get back into it now. That's awesome. Now, yeah, now, I know your first book was, um, it was, you're actually a very well-written author. You mean, you write very well and you tell the story really well. Was there an inspiration behind you getting into that, um, into writing, or was it just your thoughts that you knew you could do this? Um, well, I've always, like, written, like, poetry and things, but I was never able to write, like, with longevity. Like, I wasn't good at writing, like, stories. I write let me maybe a page or two here or there, and then I would leave it and come back to it or just completely start with something else. Um, but I always knew I'd be good at writing because my mom used to write like poetry and stuff. And like when she was in school, she used to do people's assignments, <laughs> like their writing assignments and stuff. Um, but what made me really initially start writing the story was a few years ago, Zane had a contest 
to where, you know, um, if you wrote a good story and you submitted it, um, she was choosing several people to put it in one of her novellas, and I started on it, but I just didn't finish it. And so a few years later, I just, you know, refound the story, and I was like, you know what, I'm going through something right now. I can't really fully express myself to the person I'm going through it with, so I'll just write. I'll just put it in a story. And, like, that's kind of where See Me started up. Wow. What's your um, What's your favorite part of um, writing, and what's your least favorite part? My favorite part of writing is when I start with an idea, letting it grow to whatever it's going to be. Because I can start off writing um, a poem, and it can become a short story. I start off writing a short story, which is what I was doing with See Me, and it became volume one of a book. Because like, writing stories are completely different from writing jokes. Like with a joke, I have to know exactly where I'm going. With a story, I can kind of let it build itself. Um, but my least favorite part of writing for me, I can't just sit down and decide, hey, I'm going to write this story. I just It has to be the time to write it. Because if it's not the right time to write it, it'll just be me rambling versus me being okay. inspired to write something. All right. Now, um, I noticed that you're getting back at you where you were you you um as you indicated earlier you're um you know doing your thing for to um hopefully get on the list for um for um a kidney transplant but mm-hmm. so tell us if you don't mind about that and what's been the upside and what's been the downside of that and how can people pray for you um with the kidney failure I have something called f s g s um, and it's basically where, like, if your kidney is damaged in any way, instead of repairing itself, it creates scar tissue. So right now, my kidney is between 96 to 98% scar tissue. Um, like, it's something that is on my dad's side of the family. My uncle had kidney failure. Um, my cousin um, that passed away last year, he had kidney failure. He didn't even know it. He was 21 years old. Um I've looked on Ancestry through my dad's side of the family, and they either died from heart failure or kidney failure. So it's it's something that, you know, like I wish, you know, we had known about it when I was younger because this disease actually starts between the ages of 7 and 14 years old. So it's like we didn't even know to, you know, to look for it. Um, And I think, like, you know, the upside of it, which a lot of people is gonna you know gonna find it has a side to uh, a disease. Um, I pray for patience, and one thing I learned you have to be more specific about what you pray for. Okay. And so the kidney disease has put me back into a position where I'm in a town that I don't particularly want to be in, but I can't okay. just rush out of it and I can't just leave at any time. So I have to learn to be patient. So I should have been more specific in what I prayed for. Um, Because, I mean, I'm like, um, yeah, because I have no choice. Um, And if I were to ask people to pray for me, I would just say, because, like, a lot of times, like, it's hard to, you know, determine how long a kidney is going to last. I had a cousin whose kidney lasts 20 years before it started to fail. I met people through the dialysis group, they fail in days, months, maybe two or three years. So I would just pray that, you know, I would just ask people to pray that when I do get a kidney, you know, pray that I make the list and that when I do get a kidney, I have one that is a successful match and it lasts a a lifetime. Because, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a lot that goes with the transplant. And I just pray that I'm able to handle the medical responsibility there's a financial responsibility because you have to pay for your anti-rejection drugs out of pocket after three to five oh years. Goodness. Yeah. One of my really? anti-rejection drugs was $800 a month because Medicaid, oh, well, yeah. yeah, you only get Medicare like three years to five years after, depending on what state you're in, and then you're on your own. 
So, yeah, so it's a big responsibility. And sometimes I think that maybe, you know, the transplant wouldn't be the best idea, maybe staying on dialysis with it, but then dialysis is limited to me. So, you know, it's, it's just a decision I have to make. Wow. Well, Jeff Judah, I'm, you know, I know that you're a strong young woman. That doesn't always sometimes sound comforting to people because, you know, I don't know what you're going through and I know it's hard, but I do know I'm praying for you always. And I know that there's good things that's going to come out of your future just by you sharing your story and you, and you're staying strong and your book, See Me. Um, everybody, we're on the phone with Jal Judah um, D, and she has the book See Me, Volume One, and it um, is a story of a young woman who must learn that love is not always as easy as it's made out to be. Sometimes you have to fight, cry, and smile through the pain when you find a love that is truly um, meant to be yours. And that is a true statement that I've heard all year, and this year is just starting. So, amen to that. <laughs> yep. I'm um, just saying, Jal. So we're going to come back and we're going to let you do a little bit of comedy, but we're going to play um, a song by M.O.G. and um, Nettie, and we'll be right back. Be on the line. Talk it up. No shame, son, but my faith never change up. Yes, I'm blessed. 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 No stress. No stress. No stress. No stress. I'm blessed. 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 No stress. No stress. No stress. No stress. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. All 
right, we're back with Living with the Diva. Of course, we would have the music decided doesn't want to play in the row. You know how that always goes. It'll start playing when it decides it wants to. But we're back on the air with um, Jal Judy D, comedian and self-published author with her volume one. We were talking about her volume one book of See Me. Um, I'm really glad that you guys um, are tuning into the radio show. I'm going to read you guys something that I had wrote earlier that I just thought it would definitely, definitely represent um, how we are, um, God is in charge of our lives, but we also are too. So I just I just want to read to you guys, it's called You Are. You are an author, narrator, and king slash queen of your life. So you either want to be both, you know. Um, some chapters may need to be rewritten, people may, um, to add and remove from your story until your final breath, you make the pen stroke come alive with your response and reaction to life. That's good, people. You remember, it's your choice. Who you hang with, what you do. Um, I like Job Judas. If you guys were listening, we were talking about her book, um, Volume 1, See Me, and how you have to work through the pain. And um, she's talking about working through the pain of finding a love. But you know what? We work through a lot of things in life. And at the end of the day, it's our choice. Jadjuda, what do you think? Jadjuda. Oh. oh, you know, the phone is just as crazy as it wants to be. Okay, nope. We are not going there. Why would we? All right, there we go. Jadjuda, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. So what did you, um, what do you think about people being the author and narrator of your life? Um, the author and narrator what? Of their life. Uh, I do agree because only you can dictate how you're going to view a situation. Because um, the narrator's job is just to describe the story. And based on that description alone, it can set the mood or the tone for a story. So it's like instead of taking, you know, looking at a bad situation as the worst, you have to be somewhat of an optimist and, you know, try to find a silver lining in it. Exactly. Judge, so you to tell everybody where to speak in. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of lose you. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let yeah, me switch. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, can perfect. you tell everybody where they can find you and where you're, um, where they can follow you at and purchase your book at? Okay, I'm mostly on Facebook under Jow Judah D. Um, if you want to keep up with just the comedy updates, um, then Jow Judah the Comedian. Um, I'm also on YouTube. Um, I am Jow Judah. I haven't updated that in a while, but I'm going to start working on it soon. Um, I do have a Twitter which, I mean, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm just not, like, a super Twitter person. Um, and I am on Instagram under I am Jal Judah. Um, my book can be purchased on lulu.com. Uh, you can just type my name in or see me volume one, and it'll immediately pop up. And there's also a link to it uh, on my Facebook page. And you can also follow Jal Judah Writes. There's also a link to purchase the book there as well. All right, Jal Judah, well, we're going to bring you to, to the carpet right now to do what you do really, really, really great, and you crack me up. We want to talk about online dating. Have you heard of the term ghosting? Oh, God, yeah. Yep, yep, okay. yep. I got ghosted not- last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but it is funny because, so as everybody doesn't know what ghosting is, you know, you can watch cats for and tell you what ghosting is basically where a person, they'll slowly, slowly, you know, they'll keep talking to you and they may be hot in the beginning, but then they'll talk to you and then slowly, slowly, they just fall off the carpet, like literally fall off the edge of the world. And it's just really ridiculous. So, Jobs, you're just going to bring us some funny comedy about dating in the, in the social media these days. Go for it, Jobs, you yeah, I actually got ghosted in real life, so that's what makes it worse, and it wasn't even a gradual thing. They just got mad at me one day and just stopped talking to me, 
And he eventually ended up talking to me again, and he was like, uh, I stopped talking to you because you hacked my iPhone. I was like, <gasps> I did what? He was like, you hacked my iPhone. I was like, first and foremost, if I had the ability to hack an iPhone, I wouldn't be in East Texas, and I wouldn't broke. Like, see, what? who thinks somebody hacked their iPhone? <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Like, I was like, if I was that smart, I would have money, and I wouldn't be here. Because I'd probably be hacking a banking system or something of substantial value, uh, which I think okay. that just goes to show how paranoid men are these days. Um, but, like, oh, my God, online dating is just horrible. Um, let me see. I've met guys that have approached me with lines like, hey, you going to be my baby mama? Or, hey, you going to help oh, me man. raise these kids? <laughs> like, that was the intro. Like, that was literally the intro. So, you going to help me write as my two kids? Uh, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay. What is your name? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Girl, I just, I don't oh even do online date anymore. Like, my one of my best friends met a dude who ended up being a serial killer. So, yep. No, seriously? Dead serious. Oh, wow. Dead That's serious. scary. Yeah. Wow. That's what you get on plenty of fish. They gotta call it plenty of piranhas because it ain't no fish on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what? Hey. It's, it's really hilarious because I'm on Instagram a lot and Facebook, mainly Instagram where I'm, I post a lot. But I'm always amazed at the guys who are like they're a prince of Saudi Arabia or they're something. And my question is to them is if you're a prince, do you think you would be messaging some meager girl on? Instagram, just saying. Get a friend with a green card. <laughs> yeah, because oh. I just don't get it. Oh, I don't know. And it's just sad <laughs> these days is how people, even some women, use the Internet to manipulate other people. And it all comes down to these people are, they want to try to see who they can manipulate to get by easier in life, and it's just sad. It's just, wow, it just, it just makes me sad. But... Wow. Well, so we do it, it really is. And you know what? It's just sad that people can't, um, you know, just do what they that they do. But I wanted to remind everybody, um, as you're listening to Rolling with the Diva, in 211 in any of the United States, you can call um, for numbers for food banks or for um, shelters for women and some for men very few for men, unfortunately, for domestic violence or if you have an addiction, you know, whether it's to alcohol, drugs. And it doesn't also, I did a show about three weeks ago, and just so people know, your addictions can be behavioral, and those addictions can be um, explosive disorder, it was doing with anger, it can be shopping, kleptomania, it can be a sex addiction, um, it can be mm-hmm. a um, social media addiction. And those are real true behaviors that impact the way that you do your life. So call 211 in those areas. If you're suicidal and you just know you can't make it, you need to call 911. Um, for, and I know there's people around the world right now who the, who the federal government is closed. And I'm, I take my hats off to California who said, screw you to the president and started offering unemployment to the people it's not going to make them as much, but at least they, they were there to offer and help them. And I think that's really great of California and hopefully other states will follow. This thing is not about a, um, a wall. It's about a man who, right. who likes to, who is, who is a narcissistic man who thinks only of himself, wants people to bow down to him. And it almost seems like I used to read the books um, by Tim LaHaye, um, left behind and they almost remind me of, of what they said would happen and it's just really scary you guys want to know it you can find those books with Tim LaHaye left behind series they get really get deep sort of kind of mind twisting but um pray for President Trump because he really needs to leave office and get his butt out of there because he's just he's causing havoc and um his his and his and check this out None of his supporters are saying that his overall approval rate is down to 30%. That's pretty right. low for president. I mean, so, you know, it's sad. People are going to remember this um, in election time, and hopefully you guys will pick us out there this time and vote 
because we do not need him in office anymore. I am a Republican, but I do not agree with the things that are going on. I do not stand by these things. I do not endorse these things. And any Republican or Democrat will tell you, if they're a true Republican or Democrat, you can switch who you vote for, and I do. So, um, All right. You know, right. You don't have to be stuck with, oh, my God, it could be a Democrat that lost his mind, and I may not vote for him. Or it could be a Democrat. Like this time, I voted, when I voted in the primaries, I voted for um, for people who were um, more Democrat and liberal than I did some of the Republicans because they're not doing anything. So don't be stuck. Go by your morals. I was listening to, because everybody knows tomorrow's Martin Luther King's birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. King. But he did a speech, and they were asking him. You no, know, he was on the radio with, I think it was Larry King, and Larry King asked him, I think, about, or somebody asked him about, do you think it's it's okay to break the law when he was doing the sit-ins and stuff? And he said, sometimes to break the law, you have to break. It's not breaking the law. It's standing by your morals of what's right. I'm paraphrasing. Right. And sometimes your morals have to outweigh the law because the law may not be ready to change, but the change is needed. So I thought that was a very interesting point, and I'm I'm glad to see that, like, California and other states are starting to to say, screw you, Mr. President, um, and that's it, because people are more important. And this is not okay. This is just not. This it's is not, not what Martin at all. This is It's not what Martin Luther King, um, Jesse Jackson, um, Gandhi, um, other people would stand for President Obama. Um, you know, none of these people came here or stood for it. And all of our past people who fought for us, they wouldn't have this. Because there are people who were white, black, blue, and green, as I say, who walked with us. And some of those same people are protesting what um, what President Trump is doing. It's not okay. So your morals, you know, you guys might want to think about what are your morals, what are your values, and what do you stand for? I like the quote that says, if you, you'll stand, if you don't stand for something, you'll die for anything. If you, you know, you'll, so stand for something. Don't just stand there and say, okay, I'm okay with this. And how can you help? I know you can't like feed everybody, but if you know a family, you know, that is struggling, that is receiving federal money, they have jobs, they are, you know, post office workers. I didn't even know post office workers have to report to work, even though they're not getting paid. Yep. I mean, oh, yeah. Some, PSA um, does too. I mean, that's just, and it's sad because these people, they don't know when they're going to get a paycheck. Yes, Congress did overwrite the president and about three weeks ago um, brought it, acted in a law that said that they will get all of their back pay. It's sad that people have to overwrite um, a president, but at this point, somebody needs to impeach him. And we all remember what happened with President Nixon when he got impeached. He had common sense enough to say, all right, I'm going to resign. Let's hope this person has common sense enough to say they resign. But you you guys all know in your minds as you listen to this, that's not going to happen. And, and if those right. people that are listening to, and they want to write me a letter and say that I'm a crazy and I'm not really a Republican, you feel free. But if you can send me 20 things positively that Trump is doing, I might be able to listen to you. So I can give you 20 things that he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he's overstepping and breaking laws, but no, I don't know. Just, just me. But you know what? What do you think? What do you think, Judge Judah? I'm gonna say this: with Nixon, at least he did one really good thing that a lot of people don't know about. I'm gonna say this: if it wasn't for Nixon, I probably wouldn't be alive today because back in the day, only one out of three people in the U.S. would get dialysis because if you weren't considered quote unquote viable, you weren't able to qualify for dialysis. And viable means working a job, like able to hold out a regular job. But when he was in office, he ratified that so that the government would take care of and cover the cost for dialysis. But that was at least one good thing Nixon did before getting kicked out. But like you said, what has Trump done? Like he hasn't done, like, anything good at all. Like, I really can't think of one single thing. Like, mm-hmm. Trump is so bad, I apologize for all the things I said about George W. Bush. Like, yeah, leave my, <laughs> like leave my man alone. Leave my man alone. Because I tell you, people, <laughs> I love that band because they look good in their pair of jeans. But, no, I do like that George W. I like the George. 
See, I told everybody that he wasn't that bad. Nobody believed me. Mm -hmm. Like, Uh like, yeah, I'd rather take just a little slow than just willfully hateful. It's like, I'm reminded of the Kanye West song where he said, no one man should have all their power. Like, something has to be done to regulate this because we're basically in a dictatorship. Like, I think there should be a minimum amount of time someone has to serve in Congress before they're able to apply for the office of president. Because I want to see how you run a city, how you run a state, how you run your seat before you go for something like that. Like, it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely and completely ridiculous. Because a lot of people in the U.S. already had to worry about, you know, their kids going to school and get an education. Now people whose kids have free lunch have to worry about, well, how's my kid going to get to school? How are they going to eat? And if those same families are on food stamps, they're like, well, how am I going to get food for home, let alone food for school? And, like, people that's in my situation, like, I'm on disability because I can't find a job. I have a lift restriction, and I do treatment three days a week in the middle of the day. So it's hard for me to, like, even complete a training schedule at the jobs that are offered around here. So if it go if the shutdown goes on so long, I lose my disability. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay rent? Like, how am I going to buy my kid lunch? It's just like my cousin says we're being held hostage in our own country, and I agree with it. Yeah, and you know what, Jalji, but that is so true, and I I totally agree. I won't even expand because you you were eloquent about that. Thank you very much. You know, what what I find interesting is today, I'm going to have to go back. I was reading on Google that he's, and I have to read this in research because I like research, but they're saying he's trying to change the impact of our dollar. And I'm going to tell you guys something. You know, all of these things that are happening are in the Bible. People may believe different things about the Bible, but this stuff that's happening right now is some scary stuff right now. Because Mm -hmm. If that's not the Antichrist, I don't know what is. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be really serious on that. And I, um, I'm, it's just sad that people are may lose their houses. We have veterans who are right now, even before the, um, it's easier for. You're cutting out really bad, Sabrina. Oh, the veterans. That the, can you hear me now? Yeah, we're in here now. That the veterans who are over 200,000 veterans that are receiving um, or supposed to be receiving money are not. This has been going on almost for a year and a half because they implemented a new system, but they fired the director, and not a lot of people know how to use it. So oh, this, is, this, this is just sad. So we just really need to pray. I pray that God just really... Um, comes and just really puts a spark under the Congress and the Senate and let this some of these things get resolved and the people who are without money could have it. And um, But that that's it. You guys, it is a lovely day, though, in Vegas. I'm going to tell you that. It's cold as heck, and I love it. The colder, the better. <laughs> I do not like heat. I do not like heat, and I love when it's cold. Now, everybody else in Vegas thinks I'm crazy and psychotic. But well, I don't come to Texas in the summer. <laughs> okay, because I will not, because I'm not. Um, but, Yaljita, one more time, tell everybody where they can find me and give shout outs to whoever you want. And then we're going to end the show. And you guys, we're going to end with a song. Uh, really, if you just Google Yaljita, I'll pop up because I'm the only one. But I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm probably somewhere on Black Planet. I don't know because like, I haven't used that in years. <laughs> um, cool, uh, my yeah. book link. It's still up, but I don't know. Uh, my book link is um, available on my Facebook, uh, on my Instagram. Uh, you can look up Jal Judah Writes or under Jal Judah D. And there's a ton of ways to get to the book link, which is on Lulu.com, which is a great place to self-publish. And if you have two thousand dollars to spare, they'll edit it for you. But I self-edit it. Oh, wow. If you know a school teacher, just throw them a couple of bucks, and they'll probably do it for you. Um, but yeah, like, ooh, really? like, and they also let you give discounts and codes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just Google me and I'll pop up. 
All right, Del Duda. Well, have a good night. Try to stay warm since you don't like the cold, and thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you and love you a lot. We're going to end the show oh, with you, um, You're Welcome, Feel So Good by Ted C. We'll be right back with the last day. Lord, the way you embrace me. Lord, the way you love me. Your love and kindness. It feels so good, God. So good. you guys have a great day remember you're more than enough you're wanted and you're bl- and we are blessed to have you listening to the show please 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 um, continue to tune in rolling with diva now if you were listening to this episode um, I want you guys to um, be able to tell me what was J- the name of Jal Judah's book what temperature did I say it was here in Nevada And did we talk about ghosting or catfishing? And where can you find help if you need it? It's three numbers, any of the states in the United States. That's it. You guys be good. Peace out. Love you.